Greetings to all the thousands of members of my global home church and all the visitors. I'm sorry the video, the sermon is late today. I had one set up, didn't work out. <laughs> had this one almost done, had to restart again. But you know what? Devil never wins. We'll start it over again. Today we're going to talk about uh, Christian persecution here in Obama land. It's getting ready to hit the fan big time. Remember when the Supreme Court jesters came out last, last week, week before, and approved gay marriage, and they said, Oh, don't worry, don't worry. Uh, Christians will have their rights, and they'll be able to do what they want to do and, and, and maintain their freedom of religion like the Constitution says. Well, guess what? Today in Vermont, a 56-year-old Christian pastor was put into prison. He's in prison for at least a year now. You know what his crime was? He would not do a gay wedding. He said he couldn't do it. He said that my faith won't, won't allow me to do it. And then a circuit court judge, a big wheel up in Wisconsin, refused to marry a gay couple. They're trying to get him disbarred now, taken off the bench. Usually you have to do something horrifically bad to get removed from the bench. The couple out west who refused to bake the, the cake for the gay couple, for the lesbian couple. They are now owe them $135,000. They've been, their freedom of speech has been silenced, taken away. They said that if they try to speak in public anymore about what happened or speak anywhere, they'll be arrested on the spot. And they said, pay that $135,000 now or else you're going to be arrested again. And they don't have $135,000 to pay them. The whole thing is just getting totally out of hand. And it's only getting only going to get worse, my friends. This is just the very beginning of the beginning. The next target is the churches. Again, the Supreme Court jester said, well, there's no problem with churches. Uh, the 501c3 will be safe, and churches can do what they want to do as far as refusing the gay stuff. Well, guess what? 501c3, the word's already out, that the churches who will not marry gays they're going to lose that 501c3 protection, which is going to be tons and tons and tons of money. And on top of that, they're going to pull the church's insurance. So if someone gets hurt at church or sick or someone who's an employee there gets sick or hurt, guess what? The church can't take care of them. Huge lawsuits come in their way. And people just think here, we, we live such a soft life here in Obama land. So many, so many just watered down Christians. And look overseas, 200,000 plus Christians are martyred every single year overseas, in the Middle East, in Africa, in Asia, in North Korea, all around the world. You know what their crime is? Their crime is having a Bible, that, which most Americans won't read. Their crime is saying the name of Jesus Christ in public. Their crime is believing Jesus Christ died for our sins. That's why this happens. That's why they're martyred. And here in America... We just take it for granted so much, man. There's people just, their Bibles just have an inch of dust on top of them because they won't read them. In the Bible days, people were thrown to the lions. They were beheaded. They were, they were just tortured and, and, and martyred for believing in Jesus Christ. And now, Christians here in Obama land couldn't even pick up a Bible and read it or even serve Jesus in the best of times. How are they going to do it now that all hell's about to start breaking loose? Because see, most Christians here, are, not, are, are watered down, and they're dumbed down. They are not going to stand for Jesus Christ. When, the, when the, the wind starts blowing, the winds have changed, and it comes to giving them a hardship, they will buckle. I can guarantee you that most of the pastors in these churches will marry gays, no problem at all, because they don't want to lose their money. They don't want to lose their insurance. They will marry them in a heartbeat, and they won't stand. They already accept the men for the most part, as, even as members now. Now, see, I don't have a problem with gay people. I love gays, lesbians. Bisexuals, transsexuals, I love straight people, I love black, white, Asian, Hispanic, whoever you are, I love you like Jesus loved you, loved you and loves you, but I won't stand for your wicked lifestyle, and I'll call you on it in love so I can help you keep from going to hell through Jesus Christ's love and through his mercy and salvation. But see, most Christians just don't care anymore. It's getting crazy. And see, also with the gay marriage, I told everyone, that's just, that's just the basic. I did a video where this lesbian activist admitted, I did it like last week, I think, where she admitted that their whole plan is not to be able to get married. They want to destroy traditional marriage and get rid of it, throw out the window, and they get rid of all marriage. They don't even want to get married. They want to have an open, hedonistic lifestyle. Already, you've got all kinds of pedophile groups, and they've got the saying that they want to be able to marry children because that's their right. It's their, it's their natural DNA that makes them want to have sex with little kids. And the psychiatrists and psychologists are backing them. 100%. They're saying, oh, yeah, you're infringing on their, on their constitutional rights as human beings by not allowing them to have sex with little kids. That's how they're wired. And the word, they're already pushing towards that. And they're saying, hey, the gays got married. Now it's my turn. Same with polygamy. 
you already got the polygamy group saying, I should be able to get married to two, three, four, five, six, ten, twenty women if I want to, because the gays can get married. It's my right. And this lesbian activist I told you about, she's even saying, there's six or seven people involved in my life, in my family's life, moms, dads, uh, related to the kids. We should all be able to be one big communal marriage family. No problem at all. You got people wanting to marry animals, wanting to marry their pets. You got people wanting to, to get in, marry uh, their, their mom or dad or brother or sister. It's all opened up Pandora's box, my friends, and things are only going to get worse here from here on out. This is just the beginning. And again, God's hand of judgment is here on this once great nation, once known as America, now Obama land, which is the great whore Babylon, and the great whore will be destroyed by God's hand in his time sometime after the imminent rapture. Christians, get ready for persecution. If you can't stand for Jesus, you're going to fall. I get persecuted 24-7, man. I get the most terrible, evil, wicked hate mail from Christians. I'm not talking about from non-Christians. I'm talking about from Christians. They hate my guts. They say that I'm mean. Oh, Paul Kidd, you're so mean. Or, or Paul Kidd, you're so angry all the time. No, it's called righteous anger. You should try it sometime. The Bible says it's good. And I also, oh, you don't love us. I love you with tough love to try to point you to the cross. Because everybody's so watered down and fed milk toast all the time, they don't know what love is anymore. And I'm not mean, I'm bold like a lion, but I'm meek as a lamb, because I understand that I can't do anything without Jesus Christ. But I'm not going to ever stop. They might kick me off of YouTube. They've done it several times. They might kick me off of Facebook. They might tell me I can't talk. I'm going to keep on finding somewhere on social media, somewhere, somewhere to witness for the Jesus Christ. They're going to have to come and arrest me to shut me up. And I, will not, I won't stop then. I, I, I'd preach people in jail like Apostle Paul did. I am not going to stop sharing the good news of Jesus Christ because I owe him everything. He's done so much for me. He's given me everything. I can never begin to repay him what I owe him. He's just done so much, and he's just blessed me and helped me and touched me and, and saved my life when I was, when I was backslidden and heading to hell so many times. He's done it for me, and I owe Jesus Christ everything, and I will never stop doing his work. Because see, when Jesus went back to heaven, after he died on the cross, rose again on the third day, praise the Lord, he went back to heaven, and when, when he left... <clears throat> He had one plan and one plan only was to make sure that we share his good news to everybody we possibly can. That's all that we had to do. That's what we're going to do. And that's what Christians have to do. But there's so few of us that even do it. Less than 10% of Christians have ever shared their faith with anyone because they're embarrassed or they're ashamed or they don't want to feel uncomfortable because people will, will mock them and laugh at them again. I get mocked and laughed and hated by Christians all the time. Just join the club. You just tell them to get in line and take a number. It's a long line. So here's the bottom line. The bottom line is, prepare for persecution. If you're not out witnessing your prayer as a true Christian, you need to get out there and do it right now. If you're a backslidden Christian, you need to repent right now and turn back to Jesus. I've got a prayer I'm about to pray. I've also got it in the box below the video title. And six follow next steps. Pray that prayer do those steps as soon as possible, because no one's guaranteed any more time in life. Pray with me if you can, but I know I talk fast. If you can't keep up, pray as soon as the video is over. Also in that box, I've got my Tribulation Survival Guide video. It tells you I'll get saved during the trip, what to expect A to Z. If you'd like me to pray for you for anything, contact me, and I'll pray for you every day, privately, with no one knowing but me and Jesus. So if you've never been saved, you're a backslider, let's pray now before your time runs out. Jesus, I know I've sinned. I've done bad things in my life, and I'm sorry. I believe you came to earth. I believe you died on the cross for my sins. I believe you rose again on the third day, went back to heaven, and be at the right-hand side of the Father to make a place for your children forever. Please forgive me of my sins. Wash my heart white as snow. Come live in my heart. Make me a new creature in Christ, a child of the King. Your precious name I ask it. Amen. And when you pray that prayer, Jesus says of all, not some or most, but all who come to me and ask shall be saved. Now, Christians, true Christians, keep witnessing and praying. If they won't listen, it's between them and God. All we can do is lead them to the cross, is lead them to the living water of Jesus Christ. We can't make them drink. But keep looking up, my friends, because our different draweth nigh, and we fly soon. And again, stand strong. I don't care what it costs you. I don't care how uncomfortable it is. I don't care how hard it is. We are called to be light in a dark world. We're supposed to be the salt in the world. But sadly, we've lost most of our salt, and we don't do anything as Christians for the most part to lead the loss of Jesus Christ. We need to be doing that right now before our time runs out. Because once we get raptured or once we die and we're out of here, our chances to reach the lost are gone, and we have to stand before Jesus and try to explain to him why, after all he did for us, we wouldn't do anything for him. It's shameful how most Christians act, act and it really makes me sad. It breaks my heart. So let's just keep on doing it until you're called home. Live your life for Jesus. Live your life as usual and be ready at all times because, again, our different draweth nigh. We fly soon. I pray you all have a blessed day and a blessed weekend. Share this video with everybody you possibly can and take care of yourselves. Bye.